health and well-being by Viv Trader. You will hear various experts share their knowledge within health and well-being. This podcast is based on facts and science. With knowledge, you can raise your awareness so that you can make better conscious decisions in your everyday life. Decisions that will benefit your health, the planet, and our future generations. So today I have the real pleasure of meeting with Dr. Joan Ifland. Welcome. Thank you. I am just delighted to be here. Just thank you so much for what you do and getting the word out to people who really need it. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for being here and contributing so largely as well. Now, Dr. Joan, for those who don't know you, who are you as a person and what do you do? <laughs> so um, I am really the, I would say the I don't know. I, I I always stumble here because I think this is a project that was given to me. Yeah. Um, okay. By the heavens or whoever is up there. Yeah. And I have just faithfully executed it. Wow. Big things that I, um, one big thing that I have done and another big thing that is um, going to be introduced like actually next week. So the big thing I think that I've done is I've created the scientific foundation for the field of addiction to processed foods. Now I wrote uh, the textbook for the field three years full time uh, with a team. I have a PhD, a doctorate in new in addictive nutrition which also took three years full time. Wow. And I am the founder of an online community mm -hmm. to give people control over their food and their health. So that is my, that's my number one legacy, if you will. But from that experience, I am creating a second body of knowledge. And that is how to put disease into remission. Mm -hmm. So in our Western medicine, we are taught that many diseases cannot be put into remission and must be maintained with pharmaceuticals and distress and pain for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Now, what we've seen from our online processed food recovery community is all these other diseases are going into remission. People get control of their food. They stop the stress. Um, they start doing, you know, some movement and positive thinking. They get a purpose in life. We do a lot of training so that people can help other people. Um, we do a lot of emotional processing. We, um, we we have a environment yeah. yeah and we're on air mm -hmm. over zoom 15 to 17 hours a day so that people can access us in the moment oh i need to process this open a screen uh get among people who are super healthy so we're starting a second movement which is a, a remission we are starting a community called the Remission Optimistic Community. Uh, people have been told that these conditions are chronic and incurable. And that's not true. Turns out not to be true. If you can get into an environment, an immersive, comprehensive, easy to access environment where people are healthy, mm. your brain will naturally lead you to be healthy as well. And it's not hard. It just takes time. Wow. And... So those are the two things that I really work on. I have an undergraduate degree many years ago in economics and political science. I have an, an MBA from Stanford also many years ago. Wow. And I use that business and economics and political science background yeah. to understand how how have we gotten so sick 
Mm -hmm. These are all business models. It's the pharmaceutical industry telling us that, the, oh, pharmaceuticals are the only option. That's not true. It's the processed food industry telling us that these chemicals they're presenting us with are food. No, those, those aren't food. Your body thinks those are chemicals. So I've used my business background to understand the business models that have made us so sick. And once you understand how those neurologists are manipulating us, then you can untangle it, protect yourself from not just the foods, but also the messaging mm -hmm. and, and have this incredible life, this wonderful life free from other people's uh, profit seeking. Yeah, I know. So I was reading that two thirds of the tobacco industry used addictive methods to get people hooked on smoking. Yes. And now and they, the food industry just, are using same. exactly the same methods with processed food. Yes. And therefore, oh, two thirds so of what? Americans are obese. Yes. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. This is chilling. You have brought up the most amazing topic. I'm really impressed that you knew to bring that up. So when the tobacco companies in the U.S. were losing in the courts, they finally started losing in the courts. The courts were finding it against them and levying these huge fines. They also required the tobacco industry to put their internal documents on file at the University of California, San Francisco. Well, those researchers are going through those documents now, there are millions of them, and they're pulling out the story of what happened. And these people are just monsters. So it is, you have and evidence that. We have the memos from inside the tobacco industry, inside the processed food industry. And I'm going to give you the most chilling example. So the addiction business model works like this. You, you put addictive substances in a seemingly innocent product. You make the product look innocent. You incentivize the customer to buy the product, this innocent looking product, enough times that it establishes cravings. It's an addiction, it's a drug, it's drug addiction. Mm -hmm. Whether it's nicotine or sugar or cocaine, it's, a drug, it's an addictive drug, which yeah. means that it has the power to create cravings, overwhelming cravings, irrational cravings in the reward center in the brain. So with, with, first of all, you get the person to buy the product often enough to establish the, the cravings. And then you trigger the cravings. You put reminders in their environments that trigger those helpless, overwhelming cravings all the time. So for cigarettes, this is how they did it. And what the does their reminder look like for those who yeah, want yeah. to get so the message? The Marlboro Country Store was the model with cigarettes. So you would buy a pack of cigarettes and it would have a purchase, proof of purchase label. You would save up the proof of purchase so that you could send it in and get a free prize. Uh, so you were incentivized to buy the cigarettes to get these mm, proof of purchase. Now you have behavior, advertising, yeah. cigarettes are sexy, cigarettes are masculine, cigarettes are rebellious, all this insane. Programming. Mm. None of it's true. It's just delusion. It's just manipulation. So you have that going on. And then the person realizes, oh, if they save these proof of purchase, they can send it in and get something free, like a lighter, like a belt buckle, 
like a jacket, something that you would have around you all the time, that is your trigger. So now you've got triggers, reminders that are pumping out these craving transmitters around. It's diabolical. They took that exact model and they adapted it to sugar for children. And it was called the Kool-Aid Wacky Warehouse. So they got children to buy Kool-Aid, which is flavored sugar. Sugar is more destructive and more addictive than cocaine. And they got the children to buy the little packets and cut off the proof of purchase. And then they could send them in for free prizes. Um, a a, a Kool-Aid man mm. watch. Uh, mm -hmm. transistor radio, right. shorts, a hat, mm -hmm. a shirt, uh, things that they could then also trigger other children with. And and they're 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 crowing about it. They're bragging about it in these in these memos. Yeah, it's 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 just chilling. It's when horrible. did this when did this begin? Okay, so, so addictive. The, the first company that did this was in 1963. A tobacco company bought Hawaiian Punch. Hawaiian Punch had been an alcoholic mixer, and they rebranded it uh, to children. And they um, and they created a mascot called um, Punchy. And Punchy was this wicked little man who punched people that was the joke the quote-unquote joke joke punched. but it people, made children yeah. feel empowered mm -hmm. like they could they could just uh, go through like punching people and that would be okay so that was 1963 wow 1963 tobacco bought hawaiian punch but the real change came in the mid 1980s when the tobacco companies bought Kraft, Nabisco, and General Foods in three short years. And then all you have to do is ask yourself, why would an industry that makes its money off of this horrible addiction business model, why would they be going into processed foods? And the answer is high fructose corn syrup. Mm. It's you have to have your price down. There are five A's to make the model work. Uh, you have to do a lot of advertising. You have to do addictive product formulation. You have to have a lot of availability. Mm. So as they took out the tobacco vending machines, they put in the snack and soda vending machines. You have to be able to reach it and satisfy that craving easily. So it has to be very available, it has to be affordable. It has to be affordable. So yeah, and high fructose corn syrup is the wor one of the worst things we can consume because they can trigger an addictive chemical reaction in your brain. Very right? easily, yes. Yeah. It's like um, there's a great research article by Rob Lustig on how high fructose corn syrup moves through the body like a corn alcohol. So that's what they did. And then young age is the fifth fifth A. You, you have to attack the youngest possible user to really deeply establish the addiction. The younger the age, the harder it is to give it up. So that's what they did. They brought, when they, when they got that very cheap high fructose corn syrup and they didn't have to rely on expensive sugar, from their fellow drug dealers in Florida, then boom, they moved right in. And the rest of it is just horrible. Uh, 1.6 million Americans will die from diet-related diseases every year. Hmm. What, is the, what is the obesity rate in the U.S. today? It's 83%. But here's the statistic that's really 83%. got 
and so sorry overweight and obesity yeah still but yeah. here's the t- statistic that really tells the story 93 percent of americans have either high triglycerides glucose blood pressure cholesterol or waist to hip ratio 93 percent of americans and we are eating 73 percent of our food in processed food-like substances and high fructose corn syrup are found in breakfast cereals breads processed foods like cakes everything everything every every place you can hide it it's hidden the the tobacco industry hired a harvard trained phd in experimental psychology of marketing and he figured out a method where you could hide the maximum amount of sugar fat salt in products before the person could detect it so they were able just like they they hid extra nicotine in cigarettes and like the alcohol companies will hide extra alcohol in teenage drinks like these wine coolers or these alco pops is what they call them they'll put right more alcohol in the product than is shown on the label so they brought that same model over to product formulation just to get them addicted yeah this this his name was howard moskowitz and he went around to all the processed food companies because once one company does this Everybody has to do it to stay competitive. And he maxed out the amount of sugar, fat, salt in things like tomato sauce. And that's where it's, that's where it all starts. You see the obesity rates starting out from there. But it took the invention of high fructose corn syrup and that opened the door. Wow. It's, it's such a mess now. But we do see so many good signs. I want to talk about a way out. Let's talk about that. Exactly. So once you know that the, these are neurologists at the, uh, the these companies who have, you know, the, the other thing that happened in 1990 then was the invention of brain imaging technology. And these neurologists could see right into the brain exactly which product formulation, exactly what kind of advertising, exactly what kind of pricing would trigger the most release of cravings in the brain. And those cravings, there's a, always a fight between the craving brain and the rational brain. The, the uh, reward centers yeah. in the yeah. midbrain mm-hmm. and the intelligent neurons in the frontal lobe there's a fight always between who's going to put out the most neurotransmitter and that is what's going to control behavior it's a mechanical issue Mm. it's a brain chemistry balancing issue and yes it can be influenced by childhood issues and by stress and things like that certainly but you've got to get you've got to get the frontal lobe to win that competition before you're going to control behavior, and that is um, that's what we do. And how do so, you do that? So we protect people first. Of, we protect people from cueing, triggering, messaging, reminders, stimulation. This is how those neurologists get us to lose control and buy their horrible products. You know, nobody would ever buy a sugary product or a floury product or a dairy product or a high fat product or a high salt product if they were in their rational brain. Nobody would ever pick up caffeine if they were in their frontal lobe. The frontal lobe says, oh no, that's that hurts. That's gonna cause pain. That's the frontal lobe messaging. But what the neurologists have been able to do is create this addictive craving messaging oh that's so yummy oh that's my favorite and it's my birthday and oh it's you made it just for me that that is that's that's how you start out you think oh that's that's a craving Mm -hmm. thought that's not me i'm not a chocoholic 
that's something that those neurologists have taught. They've taught the reward centers to put that thinking and that control of behavior into my brain. It's just diabolical. It's You could call it brainwashing. You could call it propaganda. Uh, you're just hearing the, the same message again and again until your brain thinks it's it's true and then acts upon it. So the very first thing that we do is we protect people from that messaging. We broadcast over Zoom uh, more than 15 hours a day around the clock. So we broadcast and then we take a break and then we broadcast and we take a break around the world. Uh, we have teams starting in Europe, where you are, Europe and Africa, uh, and then across the Americas and across the Pacific into Australia. And, and then we begin again. So we're 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We are broadcasting nice kindness, yeah. wisdom, patience, self-compassion. Uh, that's what we're broadcasting. And when you are, when your brain is absorbing that kind of messaging, you're in your frontal lobe. Oh, no, no, no. I would never eat that. That gives me such a headache. Oh, no, no. I know, I know my depression. My anxiety, that will make me anxious for four days. Oh, no, that will give me a stomach ache. Oh, no, you know, I've already had a heart attack. I don't need another one. Oh, you know, that's going to make my skin break out. Uh, that's going to make me bloated. That's going to make me lose control over my food. That's, that's all frontal lobe. But the the fact that the tobacco companies, when they came into sugar, they attacked children. They went for the youngest possible user because that means that every brain cell in that child's brain developed in an addicted brain. It's horrible. So that means that we, we can take a person and give them a different environment from messaging. And then the other thing to know about the brain, its highest motivator is to feel normal. Normal. Why? Because for uh, 7 million years of evolution, yeah. or even if you're a creationist, uh -huh. you had to belong to a tribe to survive. A number one, belong to a tribe. The tribe would defend you against predators, wild animals, or neighboring tribes. It would find you food. It would find you water. It would find you shelter. It would protect your children. And so your children could become uh, adults. You had to be in a tribe. If you were by yourself, the predators would get you. You would starve. Yeah. So you had to survive. It's survival. Yeah. The, the weather would get you or whatever. Mm -hmm. You had to be in a tribe. So your survival brain is 100% geared to being normal so that your tribe will accept you and protect you. So the reason why people can't stick to a food plan is because they're around people who are eating processed foods. They're around people who are sick. There are around people who are taking medications. There are around people who think that being sick is normal. And so your brain will make you sick to fit in. It's the, it's the brain's highest priority. So what we do, because people can open their screens, what you can get Zoom on your phone or on your laptop, anywhere. Anywhere you can get an internet connection, you can open up your screen and you can be around people for whom it is normal to eat clean and to be super healthy and to um, not have these diseases that are so prevalent in the population mm -hmm. and who are moving and who are processing emotions and who are thinking positively and who are happy Yes. And who have purpose in life. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're taking yeah. the hard things. Yeah, you become like the people you surround yourself with. And then it's so mm. easy. 
So I'll give you an example. I'll give you two like really good examples. We had a, a new member come in on a Monday morning and she's like, okay, Monday, start Monday. She eats clean through the day, but there's this dessert in her, her family's kitchen at the end of the day. And she said, well, I'm with a very patient understanding community now, so I can eat that. And she ate it. Tuesday, same thing. Wednesday, this is just three days into the program. Wednesday evening, she's standing there in the kitchen and looking at that dessert. And she says to herself, I could eat that, but I don't want to. Empowering. Yeah. Three days. Her brain had reconceptualized what is normal. She was on the screen a lot. You know, you can play it in the background while you're doing the rest of your life. It's designed to do that. So her brain had absorbed a lot of this kind messaging. Yeah. You know, that, you know, that really does hurt. And it only took three days for her to go from, I want to eat that too. I don't want to. And the other story is very similar. It's another new member. She starts on a Monday. She's got that battle going on in her head. She yeah. goes into her kitchen every day to make a meal. And the battle is, why didn't you eat that stuff in the refrigerator first? No, 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 I should have a healthy. No, no, you can eat that first. No, I should have a healthy meal first. And, and the battle, and she loses the battle. She goes and eats the bad stuff first. On Friday only five days into the program, she walks into her kitchen to make lunch. And her thought is, I want a healthy meal. You can't fight. You can't fight that urge to be normal. There's a, a, a network of very specialized neurons all throughout the brain that are doing one thing, and they're watching. What's normal? What's normal? What's normal? What's normal? Oh, normal has changed. Oh, what's normal now? You know, they're just watching. What is normal? They run the brain. They literally stimulate other nor neurons to copy what they're seeing. It's a system mm -hmm. of brain cells called mirror neurons because they make your brain mirror what's uh, going on around it. And so when you can get on a screen all the time, you know, your, your mirror neurons accept what's going on on the screen. Um, it's just shocking how easy it becomes. And then yeah. it's fun because it's yeah. not hard anymore and you're successful and you're getting better and all these miracles are happening. And yeah. they're not mirror, just your body being allowed to work the way it's designed. People get their lives back, get re yeah. reborn, you get rid of your brain fog and getting your energy back and feeling good about yourself and exactly. uh, exercising and the exactly. basic human needs to feel good. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah, It's easy. It's fun. It mm. doesn't take any time. Three days is amazing. About, you're going on about your day. Yeah. You're just playing yeah. like the radio in the background. And it does create this incredible sense of security. Mm. When you're trying to be different from your tribe, all the alarm bells are going off in your head. So now you have both. You have the security of feeling normal and you're doing all these wonderful, healthy things. So that's what we've invented. Yeah. Amazing. So you created a new tribe, a, a new normal tribe where people can come and be themselves and not and, and perhaps admit that they have a problem as well, that they need yeah. to do and something then, different. The other big thing is they're getting really high quality information. Mm -hmm. I don't pull punches. The list of foods that make us sick is it's tragically long. And I'm not going to say, oh, just get off the sugar. You'll be fine. No, that's not true. You'll get off the sugar and transfer to gluten gluteomorphine, or you'll get off the sugar and transfer to dairy, casomorphine, or you'll transfer to salt, which activates those opiate pathways, or to fat, especially if you go on a keto food, food plan and somebody is telling you you can eat all the fat you want, 
you'll get off the sugar and onto the fat. And then you'll develop fat addiction, which is a new finding. And meanwhile, your sugar cravings are incubating and they pop up again. And now you've got fat and sugar cravings. And so you, you've just, to be in a community where we get the whole list, mm -hmm. we have all the time in the world. Uh, we don't have any deadlines because they're stressful and stress activates the addiction. And it just works. What is fat addiction? All right. So fat, this is another reason why this addiction is able to kill 1.6 million Americans a year. It's because it's a severe addiction. You know, the tobacco industry has been at this for uh, to say 1985, 85, 95, 05, 15, uh, 38 years, uh, 40 years. And they okay. started attacking children really in the 1980s. Sorry, 1960s with the Hawaiian mm. punch. Um, and the high salt with Lunchables, another American product. They've been doing this for- Lunchables is their little- Next, you buy for the school lunches, mm -hmm. right? We With can uh, process the uh, oh, it's, salamis it's just, and yeah, different kinds of meats and, 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 and cheese and then and, yeah, highly it. processed. It's, yeah. It, well, the, so the point is that all four of the major uh, reward centers in the brain are now pumping out cravings. It's not like alcoholism where you've got one, you've got dopamine pumping out, but because all of these combinations, sugar, flour, gluten, salt, dairy, processed uh, high quantities of fat, yeah. caffeine, yeah. food additives, yeah. all four. So dopamine and serotonin yeah, and opioid and endocannabinoid ca cannabis. So the, the, system that cannabis wakes up is named after cannabis after marijuana endo mm. means inside cannabinoid from the cannabis well mm. that system is also activated by fat the thing to understand about food is that mother nature made it pleasurable it's not just chew on this and you will die you know it's chew on this and you'll get this nice pleasurable release of endorphins you know these nice brain chemicals it'll be pleasurable and you'll be attracted to doing it all of these survival activities like sex and food um, have big pleasure components to them we are attracted to doing them so um that activates the cannabinoid system. Wow. And it, it really came into to be a problem. So we started hearing about it when um, irresponsible, I'm going to say irresponsible, keto advocates were saying, and I've, I've been in, in conferences, I've heard this said from the stage, Oh, fat is so satiating. You can't eat too much of it. You can eat all you want. It'll You'll just get filled up. You won't want too much. Well, if you're not addicted, maybe that's true. But right. even 10 years ago, the, the rates of addiction in the culture were going way up. Yeah. And um, there was a lab in Boston, University of Boston, it's Pietro Cotton's lab. And he he's made a number of very significant discoveries. He's the one that discovered that processed foods wake up the stress center yeah. in the brain. And there's this dance between the stress and the cravings where one can set off the other and the other can set off the one. So you've got to not just get the processed foods out and the stimulation, you've got to get the stress out as well. Because the stress will just reactivate the addiction. Anyway, so 
people got on these keto food plans and especially the just the diabolical, toxic, poisonous, deadly keto processed foods. And oh, what kind of foods are, are are we talking about here? Oh, we're talking about um, candy, keto candy. Right. So these would be things like um, peanut butter cups, hazelnut cups, ah, cups right. yeah. chocolate yeah, no, and yeah. um, coconut mixed mm -hmm. together. And you know, it's mm -hmm. made into a, a candy. We're talking about pancake mix and cake mix and um, cookie mix and keto bread and keto this and keto the other thing. Well, all processed they're highly processed and here's here's th there's just so many things that are deadly about this so what we were hearing is people would start on a keto food plan they'd be so happy well the sugar cravings were gone fat cravings are different they come up slowly so you start out you're having a uh, one package of Oh, uh, like a high fat dairy, um, you know, one okay. package of chips a day. And then it just grows. Then it's two. And then it's a package of pepperonis. And then it's a package of pork rinds. And then it's, um, and then you're just eating them all day long and you can't stop and it's growing. That's how you know it's an addiction, progression, loss of control. They did this study with rats and um, they gave the rats un, uh, to free access to uh, fat. They gave two rats. They had two groups. Yeah. One, one had access to sugar. The other had access to fat. Right. And over 21 days, you just saw the increase in use. But also you saw the hyperactivation of the stress pathways. And the they're called locomotion pathways. But those behavior pathways... Right. So you see yeah, yeah. the the substances uh -huh. starting to activate those behavior pathways. Mm -hmm. And you see the increase in usage. And it was very different. So if you measured it just by um, by volume, the rats getting into sugar addiction were going faster. It looked worse. But if you measure it by calories, the rats yeah. get the fat addiction were actually accelerating faster than the sugar addicted rats. And how long time does it take to develop well, a full blown addiction? days for the rats, which um, translates to, I forget exactly whether it's three months or six months for a human. Wow, a that's human really quick. Longer lifespans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sugar binging can take place on day one. What? Especially day one? If it's, if it's um, chocolate. Rats will start to binge on, on chocolate on day one. Now, here's the thing that's really diabolical about this is many keto advocates also advocate for intermittent fasting. If you take the animal off uh, you fast them, they actually develop the addiction much faster. Very profound information. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. So within 24 hours of not eating in a human, this is very hard to listen to, and I'm so sorry. Makes me want to cry. Within 24 hours of not eating, the dopamine pathways in the brain will start to hyperactivate. What do you think that is? That's that's hyperactivating the addiction. It's the brain trying to Cheers. comfort the human whom it believes is going to starve to death. This famine is, is a cause of death around the world for it's deeply a fear of famine is deeply ingrained in, in humans and um if you don't eat for 24 hours 
your brain is afraid that you're going to die and it will start yeah. to comfort you by hyperactivating dopamine. Well, we don't live in a world of famine. We live in a world where when you have dopamine being pumped out and controlling your behavior, you're not more than a few feet from any friggin' vending machine or your own refrigerator, or your own kitchen. You're in your car, you can drive through, you can pick up. You can immediately address that hyperactivated dopamine from not eating by eating a processed food. Wow. So that dopamine triggering, what would a thought look like for anyone <gasps> out there? I haven't had that in the longest time. I'm going to get it right now. I really love that. Oh, that's my favorite food. Oh, I deserve it. Oh, I'm going to go get that right now. I haven't had that. I right. just love that. Yeah. Loss of control. Yeah. And there's too. the frontal lobe mm -hmm. saying, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And there's the, no, yep, no. You're saying, no, 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 no. But because the reward centers won the contest of who's going to pump out the most uh, neurotransmitter, this behavior center won that. They pumped out more neurotransmitters, so they get control of the behavior center. Your frontal lobe could be screaming, no, no, no. And you're still, I call it the zombie walk. You're still walking out to the kitchen to get the whatever, or you're still picking up your keys and getting in your car to drive to get it. Uh, that is the, the craving centers won that contest. And oh, really when the fasting, the yeah. not eating helped them. When you don't eat enough for long periods of time, and I unfortunately I'm the victim of this too, because I did low calorie dieting uh, after my pregnancies. Um, you we wake up another part of the brain, it's the fear of famine brain. And now it's very hard to lose weight because your body has reacted to not enough food by lowering your energy expenditure rate resting energy expenditure rate so when you're just sitting around you're you're using up energy but if your body thinks that famine is coming or you're experiencing a famine it will drop the amount of energy that you're using while you're just sitting around mm. resting energy expenditure rate and then you cannot lose weight it's just impossible your body won't let you your body thinks it's saving your life yeah and i had a talk with the eating disorders association as well in the u.s and dieting is number one entrance point into obtaining an eating disorder which is usually a problem a huge problem as well eating disorders community is that they don't recognize addiction, and so they they don't have the skill set, nor the environment, nor the program structure to patiently walk, quietly, confidently, calmly walk with somebody while they disengage from these foods. So what they say is, oh, get off this food, and the person goes and binges on it. Well, that's not how you deal with addictions, substance use disorders. You put that person into a community where it can be normalized. If it's alcohol, you can go into Alcoholics Anonymous. If it's processed food, you can come into the addiction reset community. But to say that moderation is a better option would be like to say to a cocaine addicted person, well, because I told you to get off the cocaine and you went and binged on it, we're not gonna try to get you off of it. We're just gonna let you use it in moderation. Or an alcoholic. Well, I told you you had to get off the alcohol and you went and binged on it. So instead of taking you off the alcohol, we're just gonna let you use it in moderation. Into a program, you have to get them into a program. Yes. where they can slowly replace mm -hmm. the using activities with not using activities, where mm -hmm. they can reestablish their self-esteem, where they can be around people who respect them and where they are going to be um, 
listen to uh we we just we have this whole training where we use motivational interviewing it's this incredibly beautiful way of talking to people who are in the grips of uh an addiction yeah. uh, you have to get program you can't just give them a food plan and of course they're gonna go off the rails um yeah. you have to be really really kind for a long time before mm. they internalize being kind to themselves and then once you get it as i said it's just so much fun yeah so much fun. you're wow. and... what a mission work fantastic yeah. very informative thank you so much it's actually very shocking i'm a bit shocking. taken by all this yeah. now um where where do you hope we are john in 10 years from now i hope everybody knows that pharmaceuticals and surgery are not the only answer so we have this new community coming on the remission optimistic community it was another business model Uh, Rockefeller in the early 1900s wanted a pharmaceutical industry, so he just suppressed all the competition. He got the state legislatures to agree that um, non-pharmaceutical approaches were quackery. So we have all these lovely, they're free, they work very, very well, breath work, walking, nature, yeah. meditation, visualizations, they, they work well for keeping the body healthy. Um, yeah. So I hope in 10 years that people know that pharmaceuticals are an essential, often essential, not always, often essential option on the list. Surgery is can be an essential option on the list of maybe 50 things that people can do to make themselves healthy. So one of my great greatest hopes is that people will look at the whole list and that is we do have a website now for that it's called remissionoptimistic.com and we are offering a program there and uh, we'll soon be offering a training so if you're a, a professional or a lay person and you want to know how to use these other uh, techniques then integrate um, it all to a more holistic training. yeah yeah Um, and then the other thing I really hope people know is that processed foods are deadly. It's not deadly like heroin where you're going to inject the wrong thing and, and die. It's deadly over many years. But in the meanwhile, you're not getting to have this terrific life that you're so entitled to. You've got brain fog, you've got fatigue, you've got depression. These are all chemical reactions to sugar, flour, gluten, excessive salt, dairy, excessive fat, caffeine, and food additives. That's not you. No. You've got the, you're this wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> energetic, vibrant, creative person. And yeah. yeah, so processed foods are responsible for a tremendous amount of disease and stress in combination with processed foods is... It's so sad. So get out, you know, just take your power back. <laughs> take your power back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love your passion. I can see you really burning. Oh my gosh, it's so much for fun. This. Yeah. So I can tell. Fun. But it's so much it's so needed. So we need we can't go on like this anymore. It's just not working, obviously. Yeah, well, it's, it's we're yeah. dying from it. We're dying yeah. from it, especially yeah. in the U.S., which is, I uh, think that the U.S. is an unregulated capitalist system. Regulated capitalism is great, uh, but unregulated capitalism is deadly. Mm. Well, I think someone should go out and teach children in school about this so they can take their power back and know what, what actually processed foods are impacting, how, what, how much of an impact it has. Yeah, on their health yeah. and the future, and they are innocent. Children deserves the best. So it's awful. Hopefully, it's awful. someone it's will take on this mission. And yeah, yeah. Well, you are. You're helping. You've just gotten the word out to all your yeah. listeners. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it too. I think it's super important that. to to be a messenger and and help 
if we work together as a community it's all about working together exactly exactly yeah. um now dr joan it's been my pleasure it's been absolutely delightful to have you here today is there anything else you'd like you. to say as a final word yeah you can find us processedfoodaddiction.com is the the food addiction side of things remissionoptimistic.com just sign up and you'll be invited to free workshops where you can keep learning keep learning and of course keep the learning. textbook is on amazon it's uh processed food addiction foundations assessment and recovery so you can go to amazon get the get the get the book thank you so much Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I hope you got some valuable information today that will help you increase your health and well-being. Thank you for listening and see you next time.